When you read the first marriage in history, it's found in the constitution of our country. Section Genesis, subsection 2, article 24. Here's what it says. First of all, it says, God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden. The word Eden is a complicated word in Hebrew. It's very important. The word Eden means spot. It means delightful spot. But when God made the first male, he put him in this presence. The first thing God gave the man was his presence. Eden. So the first thing a man needs is not a woman. Are you listening to me, brothers? The most important thing a man needs, a male needs, is the presence of God. And a woman should meet you in the presence of God. Some women amaze me. They leave the presence of God, go in the bush to find a brother, and then try to drag him back to the presence. Come on, you're going to come, brother. Oh, yes, you will. Eve meant Adam in Eden. And then the next thing God told the male, one simple word. Genesis 2 verse 15. Work. Can I say it again? Work. God gave man work before woman. Or, hey, everybody say, work before woman. That means a man needs a job before he gets a woman. God's priorities are very clear. The first thing God told the man, Genesis 2.15, he says, cultivate. Cultivate means to bring out the best in everything around you. To maximize the potential of everything around you. To make everything fruitful. He only said that to the male. That's why God will never give a male a finished woman. The male was created by God to create what he wants. The woman you're looking for, brother, doesn't exist. She's in your head. Your job is to take the raw material you married and cultivate it into the woman in your head. So you've been married for 20 years and you still don't like the product you get. That's your fault. <laughs> Jesus Christ is a real man. He's a real man. A real man. He said about his wife. He said, husband, love your wife like I love my wife. Now you can tell us how to do it. He says, you wash her with the word. Then you remove every spot, every wrinkle, every blemish, and present her to yourself. Whoa. Present her to yourself, he said. If your wife putting on a little bit of weight and you don't like the fact she's putting on weight, don't criticize her. Wake her up at 6 o'clock. Come, baby. Let's go jogging. Cultivate you. Cultivate you. Come on, baby. Woo, come on, baby. Come on. Come on, baby. You don't like her dress? Take her down to Saks Fifth Avenue. And you pay for it. Come on, ladies. Help me, lady. Help me, lady. Help me, lady. Help me, lady. Cultivate me, baby. She can't speak good English, send her to school and pay for the tuition. The fourth thing God told the man, he says, God, the man, the male, will be the same. For everything on this scale. That's why God gave you a stronger bone frame, a bigger muscle mass. Not to abuse the woman, but to protect the woman. The last thing God gave him was his word. God says, Adam, do not touch the tree. God never told the woman about the tree. Never. Which means the male was the only one who got the word of God. His job was to teach his wife the word of God. Nothing can frustrate a woman faster than this statement. A woman will, will always ask a man, so what do you think? And that dummy would answer, what do you think? Don't do that, brother. Don't do that. 
He's still looking for knowledge and direction. Now watch this. That was the last command God gave the man. Just the truth. That's verse 15 and 16 and 17. Then in verse 18, God said, It's not good for this man to be alone. Now, don't just read the statement fast. Slow down. It's not good for this man to be alone. What man? The man who is in his presence, working, can cultivate you, can protect you, and teach you the word. That is classic. So, here's the problem. If you meet a man who don't like his presence, ain't working, can't cultivate and improve you, can't protect you, and do know God's word, it is good for that man to be. 